In today's video, I want to show you how you can convert your Android device into a home lab server. I will connect an external hard drive to the tablet and share it in my network. So we are going to convert the tablet into a NAS. You will need root and you can find all the steps in the description of the video in my repository. So the first thing to do is installing Thermos. In this guide, I will go from scratch. So the first thing to do is going to this link and open the different versions. We are going to select this one and we are going to click on the universal apk just download the file and install it if you have a message saying that the application is dangerous don't worry this is an open source project you can check it but this application is not dangerous at all so don't worry the next thing is open it and we are going to update the repository after this we are going to upgrade the packages that come by default installed in termux and if you have been prompt, just write Y and enter. The same for all the other prompts. So here I will write Y and click enter. And now I'm going to change the mirror of the repository just to update the repository faster in the future. So select the one that corresponds to your location and click on enter. Now I will show you how to customize the terminal. I'm going to use Starship because it's going to be very easy to do. Just go down until we find Thermux. We are going to copy this command and we are going to install Starship in Thermux. So paste it into the applications. As you can see, I have the Thermux apps recently installed. So I'm going to move it to the desktop and I'm going to paste the command here. When you click enter, the package will be installed and now we are going to customize it. If we go to the preset section, we can select the one that we like the most. In my case, I will select this one, but you can select any other. And I'm going to copy this command. So now again, let's go to Thermos and paste the command. I got an error, but you just need to create the .config folder and paste the command again to fix it. So paste the command again, and now everything is set up. The thing we have missing is copying this line, and we need to paste into the bashrc file. So go to Thermos and be sure that you are in the root folder. You can type cd and modify the bashrc file. Just paste the line we have just copied, Control o and Control x to save and exit. And now you can see that we have the colors, but we are missing the icons. So for fixing this, you can go to my repository, click on the link that you are seeing right now, and we are going to the customization section, because here we have the commands to install some nerd fonts, the fonts that have all the icons. So just copy this command, paste it into Thermux, and wait until the process finishes. After this, we are going to be able to select the nerf font that we like the most. You can check the original repository. We are using this tool. And to use it, we need to execute the command get nf nerf font. You can select the one that you like the most. In my case, I will select the number 26, hack. And you will be prompted to select the font and the style that you like the most. You can select Italy, ball. In my case, I will select just regular. After this, you can see that now we have all the icons and we are going to install LSD to improve a little bit how the terminal looks when we type LS. Now let's create an alias. So when we type LS, we are going to execute LSD instead. You can write the line that you're seeing to create an alias, Control O and Control X. And we need to load bash again. So now when we type LS, you can see that next to the folders, we have an icon. And now we are going to install OpenSSH, the SSH server we are going to use, so we can connect remotely to the tablet, so we don't need to be executing the commands in the tablet, we can do it in the computer. Just check that the configuration file is like the one that I'm showing right now, we don't need to modify anything by default. And to finish, we need to set a password for the user, so we need to type the command passwd, write a password two times, and we are good to go. In my case, I will use this tool for Windows, Mova Xterm, so I can connect remotely with SSH to the tablet. So I will download the free version, you can use the same free version as me, but we need to know the IP. To know the IP, you can use the command ifconfig, and you will see the IP of your device, like you are seeing right now. So we are going to copy it. Also, we need to start the SSH service, for that we are going to execute the command sshd. And to finish, we need to know the port of the SSH server. To know that, we can use the command that you are seeing right now in the screen, 
and it will show the port that we are using, like you can see right now, is the port 8022, instead of the usual 22, but we are in Thermos, so we need a higher port. So now we are going to connect to the tablet remotely, so for that we need to know the IP address, so as I showed before, you can use the command if config, and we are going to copy the IP, we are going to paste it into the IP part, now we need to know the username, you can use the command who am I, and you will see the username, and we know that the port is the port 8022, like we saw. Now with all this data, we can click on connect, and we will be prompt with the password. So type the password that we said before. So finally, we are inside Thermux. We have connected remotely to our tablet, and we can execute any command we want. I will show you now, for example, how to install a Debian distribution with pureroot. So we are going to install the package called pureroot distro, and with that we are going to install Debian, but you can install Arch Linux, Ubuntu, Alpine, or any other distro that you can find videos on the channel. So from this point, you can log into the Debian distribution with the command pd login Debian, and the first thing to do is, as always, update the repositories. And from this container, you can run any script or any Telegram bot that you have or whatever. If you want to know how to run a Telegram bot, you can leave a comment in the video. Now I will show you how to set up the storage in Thermux. So we are going to use the command Thermux setup storage, and you will find a folder called storage, where you can find the internal storage of the device. But to access, for example, an external USB hard drive, we need super user permissions or root permissions. So to go to the root terminal, we have to type su, and you will see that we need to grant permissions. So click on grant, and you have, for example, mice to handle the super user permissions. And now we can go inside the folders that you are seeing right now. With that, you can see that in the folder called mount, MNT. We can see there is a folder called SD card. This is the internal storage. And you can take a look in general to all these folders because you can find the different storage that you have in the tablet. If you have an external SD card, the internal storage, etc. And you can see that you can write whatever you want. If we go to a file explorer, you can see that this is the file that we have just created. And you can create a folder, a file, delete them, whatever you want. If you go to media, you will see this identifier, you can go inside, and this is the external SD card that I have in the tablet. So I can create, again, any file, any folder I want in the external SD card and manage all the data from this path. So you can see that if we go to the file explorer, to the SD card, this is the file that I have just created. Now we need to look for the identifier for the hard drive. I have connected a 4 terabyte USB hard drive, and this is the path that we need to mount. So we are going to create a new folder called, for example, HDD, and we are going to mount the external hard drive to that folder. So you need to use the command just in right now, mount with all these parameters to mount properly the hard drive so we can access and write into the external USB HDD. Basically, this is to show you how to mount and find the HDD or the external devices connected to the tablet via the USB. Now, I'm going to show you how to mount a chroot environment very quickly, and we are going to create a Samba folder. With that, we are going to share this HDD folder so we can access from any device in our network. Basically, we are going to create a NAS server. The only downside is that unit root, because if I try to go to this folder just with the usual Thermux, we can see that we don't have permissions. Now I want to show you how to set up Thermux in the startup of the tablet. So if the tablet restarts for some reason, you can access the SSH server without any problem. We are going to download the Thermux boot application, and we are going to use Thermux, for example. We are going to start wget, and we are going to Right, the you get and the link to the APK. Now we are going to move the APK to the download folder. So from the tablet, we can go to a file explorer. For example, in this case, I will show you the tablet from the computer. We can go to the file explorer, download folder, and here just install the APK like any other application. You will find again the same prompt as with Thermux about the dangerous application. But again, this is an open source application and it is not dangerous at all. Now it's important that we set the Thermux boot application 
to not be closed by the system in the background. So you can go to the settings, to the battery safe settings that your device has and be sure that the application is not restricted in the background. Now we need to create a couple of scripts so when the device starts Thermux boot execute the SSH server. You can use this to any other service that you are running in your Thermux but we are going to use just for SSH right now. So you can read all the documentation. This is from the original wiki and we are going to follow it. So we are going to copy all these commands and we are going to create a file called for example start SSH that will be executed when the tablet starts. That way we are sure that if the powers go off and the tablet restarts or whatever, we can access the tablet remotely without any problem. So just paste the command, Control O and Control X to save an exit and you can reboot the tablet to check if everything runs on the beginning. But just in case I don't know why the SSH servers doesn't start, I will follow the last step of the wiki. So we are going to copy these commands. We are going to create a new file called, for example, start services or whatever. And we are going to paste these commands. Again, control O and control X to save an exit after we paste everything. And now we are going to reboot again the tablet. Now you will see that after a few seconds, maybe half a minute, you will see a Thermux icon on the tablet and you can access the Thermux SSH server without any problem. And I didn't open any applications in the tablet. And finally, let's move to the final part of the video where I show you how to set up an Ubuntu CHROOT environment. In this case, we are going to use Box64 Droid because it's the fastest way that I found to set up a CHROOT environment. And this way, we are going to be able to execute any Linux software that we want. I will leave a video in the description on how to use this environment and in case you want to install a desktop environment on this, you can. So check this out. But by the way, we are going to just use here the terminal mode. We are not going to use any graphical desktop and you can just copy and paste all the commands from my repository. This way, we are going to be able to execute any Linux software, as I said, and you could, for example, have here some telegram bots running or a torrent server. Now I'm going to show you how to detect and mount the hard drive. We are going to use the same command blkid and you can check that we have the same path. So we are going to follow the same method as before. You can just create a folder where you want. In my case, I like to do it in the folder slash mnt and I'm going to mount the hard drive. Now you can see that if I go into the folder, I can read everything, create new files, delete them or whatever. So now what we are going to do is create a Samba server and we are going to share the folder from the hard drive. So we are going to follow this guide on how to set up a Samba server in a Raspberry Pi, but the commands are exactly the same for our Android device. So you just need to copy and paste everything and we're going to edit the configuration of the Samba folder. Here, this is a template that you can copy and when you paste, you have to modify the path and you can modify the name of the folder. For example, the first line is the name of the folder. You can put it whatever you want. In my case, I will put just Android shell and we need to modify the path. Remember that in my case, the path is slash mnt slash hdd. In this folder, I mounted the hard drive so we can access it. Now we just need to set up a password for the user. So we are going to write this command, Samba password. With that, set up a password that you are going to remember. And we are going to use the credentials root as the user and this password as the password. And to finish, we are going to connect to the HDD from the Windows File Explorer. For that, we need to know the IP, so we are going to install net tools on the ubuntu chroot environment and you can now use ifconfig so you can check the ip now you can go to the windows file explorer click on connect to a network drive and put the ip here you have to put backslash backslash the ip backslash and the name of the shared folder if you click on look for the folder you will see that now you can 
put the credentials, as I said, is root for the user and the password that we have just set. And you will access from the Windows File Explorer the hard drive that it's attached to the tablet. So I have, for example, the tablet in the living room and I'm accessing the hard drive from my computer. So I hope you like this video and if you want more projects like this or a continuation of this video, just leave a comment. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe.